Sir! Sir! <gasps> Grab me that egg. But sir, it has teeth. But didn't you see them lips? Sir! Grab me that egg. You are now listening to the Curtis King Podcast. What's going on with your music producers? It's Curtis King of Curtis King TV and the Curtis King Podcast. I want to say thank you for tuning in today for this interview, this special interview and special episode of the podcast. Before we get started, I want to make sure that those of you are listening on the traditional podcast platforms, you already know what to do. Make sure that you hit us with a five star rating as well as leave commentary. Uh, I'm sure this is going to be a hilarious episode of a very, uh, A very good change of pace, I should say. We were just talking about that right now. But uh, make sure that you leave us a five-star rating for my YouTube family. Make sure you leave some commentary like I know you're already going to do. But uh, also, too, share these episodes with someone that you think would find some enjoyment in it. But needless to say, I got to make sure that we welcome my guests. We got the Mike Cake, sir! Sir, we have the. Are you, are you kidding me right now? We got Mike Cakes in a building. Like, I, let, let me, let me. First of all, how you doing? Because I'm about I'm to get into good, my spiel. Man, I'm you good? I'm you chilling, good? I'm chilling. You looking real 6K on that new PC, man? Listen, look, look. Man, PC, come on. Man, I had, I had to upgrade on them, man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. The, the sir, the sir, sir, buddy is, is it's coming in. It's coming in just look, a little bit. Look, you know, I had to upgrade. Can't 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 be that down bad the way this is looking right now. I'm like, man, you got me, you got me on camera looking like, hold on, let me, do I gotta like change some settings or something? No, it's it is a pleasure to have you here. Um, let me kind of just kind of give a little bit of a breakdown of how you came on my radar uh, as a buddy of mine named Oh Gosh, and he actually put a name to content that I had already seen already. Right, I'm not heavy on TikTok. My wife Whoa. is. And so I'll go back and forth and we'll like share stuff we'll be text messaging because we work from home. And so we'll text message stuff like, oh, did you see this? Um, and I'll be with my son. I'm like, oh, this is hilarious. And then I'll send her stuff like like the stuff that um that you create. And then I'll come across your content and I'm like. Yo, yo, like, like, I, OK, first of all, I can't just watch one. So for those of you that so let me actually say this. OK, so I came across your content. The homie, oh, gosh, put a name to it. And. This down bad series, this uh, a down bad man, the, the 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 down bad lady. I mean, you got these brands that are going on, but then also I'm starting to dig into your story as I followed you and um, seeing stuff like you graduating and with the mechanical engineering. And so I want to break down all of that. But before we get into that, I'm sure they want to know for those who don't know who you are and maybe have not had an opportunity to come across your content. Uh, could you explain to them who Mike Cakes is? Okay, uh, <laughs> uh, you damn, that was already a pre dope ass introduction. Okay, I'm just basically a, a, a internet, an internet funny person, man. You know what I'm saying? That the internet's a huge wild thing. Like you can't put the internet in the box. Sure. So I just want to say honestly, I'm like an internet personality, but people know me as like down bad man. Like, huh? <laughs> <laughs> grab me that fish or. Uh, bird, you know, yeah. some classics. There's some classics out there. There's some classics. <laughs> look, look. Some of my favorites. The 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 more recent one with the egg. Um, oh. uh, he said, <laughs> but it has but it has teeth. He said, the, well, that's but it has, also got lips. That's all got lips. <laughs> I, bro, I be sitting here crying, going through all of these, and it's like my wife, like, are you watching the same video? I'm like, no. This is a winning formula every single time. <laughs> It don't need to change into nothing else. Bro, I love it. Um, and also, to, I got to make sure we highlight, you know, these. And I know you were kind of being very humble about it, but I'm like, bro, you got two point what million followers on TikTok right now? Oh, OK, so, yeah, I, got, I have two point four million followers on TikTok. Yeah, you're not just some Internet funny guy. I know of, I know a bunch <laughs> of Internet funny guys with four <laughs> with four likes and, and, and talking to an audience that's not there. No, you you have done your thing and. To hear that you've done your thing while still, I mean, even recently, uh, really recently, actually graduating with a mechanical engineering degree. What the hell, Mike Cakes? How do you how do you balance the output of content? This is a very general question. The output (laughs) of content and also balance what it requires to graduate, because I'm sure 
my audience is mostly music producers who are, you know, trying to balance their music plus go to school. What does that look like? Because your output, it, I would have never known that you had that kind of demanding uh, 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 degree pursuit. I mean, that's crazy, bro. Let's just say <laughs> here, here. Here's why I was blessed. This this worked out perfectly for me. Right. Because honestly, like making making content, making silly videos, that's like what I do for fun. Like that's just the shit I love. Like whenever I need to relax and whenever I'm stressed. Right. When I make a video, whenever I make content, I, that relieves stress for me. Mm. So when I'm in college, like during college, this was the most stressful semester I've ever had, man. Like I got final projects. I got fucking real paper. I got like research papers, like not no five page research paper. Like I got fucking 25 page research paper. You got to do research. You got to cite your sources. You got to have thesis. I'm fucking I got to push it to like I got mechanical components I'm dealing with. So I was the amount of stress I had was on such a high level right. that fueled my content. You know what I'm saying? Because when I was able to make the content, it was like I wanted it. It was just they were fueling <laughs> each other. You know what I'm saying? Right. And it really was just a blessing because honestly, like making videos is, is what I love. Like, it's just it's my passion. Right. You know, it, 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 just, it just helped me. It, it drove me. So it, it ended up becoming part of the balance or part of the the, the formula to the balance. Yes, that's, that's dope. absolutely. I mean, and I think there's a lot of producers who are listening to this who are like, yo, that that sounds very similar. This is why I bring interesting individuals. I love my producers, <laughs> but y'all not. Y'all, sometimes y'all not as interesting as a Mike Cakes. Okay? And I'm loving the fact that we get to discuss like I'm I am just as a fan, first and foremost, as a fan of your content and what you do. Um, as somebody that has wiped many of tears watching this 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 down bad man, um, because it's like it, it's a little bit scary. Like you'll you'll be you'll pull up a clip, and I'm like, damn, I'm a, I'm a married man by the way. I'll be like, I'll be like, damn, Mike, like, hey, what, 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 why you gotta put this on my timeline right now? And, and then you'll literally say some of the words that in my, I'm like, yo, come on, man, you can't be you can't be inside my head like that. What is the origin of this? Is this down bad man? Like, how did this even come to be? Okay, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna tell you. First of all, the way he came, man. I swear, the like it, it was a gift from God. I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. So the you, before I made Down Bad Man, I already had videos. Like I had been going viral on TikTok like for a year before Down Bad Man. What would you say was like the first the first banger for you when it came to just creating content before that? The very first viral video I had, which got like eight hundred thousand views on TikTok, was I did um. A gr grandma found my special brownie in my refrigerator. I <laughs> you know, so I I'm like <laughs> looking through the refrigerator, like looking for some shit, and like right. it cuts to my granny like passed out on the stairs. You know what I'm saying? And that was my first viral video. So when I got that first viral video, I realized because I was thinking like everybody else, you only need one viral video and you'll make it. Mm. Yo, fuck no. Like, yeah. <laughs> yo, you got kids who are making videos that are getting a million views every single day. Right. So it's like, you really have, you don't need one viral video. You need about 40, 50 of the motherfuckers to really mm. see. So if somebody sees you, they remember, because somebody will watch a funny video nowadays and like it and pass on, go on to the name. They don't know your name. Right. They don't know what you do. That's it. Right. So basically I had been doing that for a whole year. I was I was on a hot streak for like a week. I had put out like a few banger videos and I just had drank some coffee or something. I had drank some, I usually don't drink coffee past seven. Mm -hmm. So I drank, I drank some coffee. I was also good herbal chilling. Like I was right here at the corner of my room, just like on my floor. I couldn't fall asleep. Right. Scrolling to TikTok. <laughs> and I was scrolling to TikTok. And I see this dude, it's not even a comedy channel or nothing, it's a cooking channel. Mm -hmm. This dude makes some like I don't know, it was like a, a, a brisket or some shit. And he's cooking it up and he gets the final brisket. He's just presenting it. He cuts the brisket in half and like he puts the brisket together and squeezes it uh -huh. in the camera. Yep. And juices literally shoot out of the brisket. <laughs> like, what? you know what I'm saying? Like the brisket literally squirts onto the screen. And I'm like, yo, <laughs> you know, I feel I'm late. I'm stoned. I'm late. I'm trying to think what's going on. I'm like, yo, this look like <laughs> This look like a vagina. That's what I'm thinking. <laughs> this looks like a straight up vagina. Right, 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 so right. I was a waiter before this whole pandemic pandemic shit hit. Like I was mm -hmm. waiting tables. 
And I remember whenever I want to get somebody's attention at the table, I also be like, sir. Yeah. Sir. <laughs> so I just imagine, you know, nigga at a, a restaurant, right. eating a weak ass fucking salad. Uh-huh. He look across the he look across, he see a motherfucker getting a, a steak presented, getting that squirt st- squirted in his face. <laughs> He, of course, he's gonna be distracted. You know what I'm saying? He'll be like, "Oh shit!" Like, what's that all about? <laughs> what's, all, what's all that all about? So you try to get his attention, sure. sir, sir. Uh huh. Who? <laughs> and before, and, and when I first the very first sir sir video, like I didn't know it was gonna be down bad, man. Sure. I wasn't sweating. Sure. Didn't know none of this. So the first line, the first time I said it, I was like, "Let me get two of those." to go mm-hmm. and that did that did that was a banger video that video did went ultra viral that's crazy but it's crazy and that's how you just post it up and, and i mean but, but that's it seems like that's the moment when the magic happens is when we yeah. leave ourselves a little bit of time because i'm sure that that's only a microcosm of things that's probably going through your head you still in school you know yeah. you got just life don't stop work, working the way it does and to have that moment to just lay down and be like Huh, let me just kind of look it on the internet and see. And and, and that kind of leads me to my next question is is I mean, well, I don't want to get to the next question because I want I want you to definitely get to the the origin of um of of down bad man, but it, it just feels like that's when the magic happens. So you already got these videos that have gone viral, you got these videos that are gaining you some traction, and then then you 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 come across this video, it kind of is yeah. influenced by your job and what you're doing, and so when do you feel like you start to to really gain traction with that? Or was it just straight out the gate? It wasn't straight out the gate. Cause mm-hmm. I did that video. It did good. I was like, okay, that was cool. Yeah. Then I did another one where it was soup and somebody was like flipping soup. Mm-hmm. And I was like, let me get two of those. Let me get that to go. I did the to go again. Mm-hmm. But when it really hit down bad man, when I really was like, okay, we might have something. I think it was down bad where it was a bird. Mm-hmm. Like so there was somebody who like, Got a fish and they like just stuck it in this bird, <laughs> and they stuck it in the bird's mouth. And I I remember I don't know why I think I had like I had this leather coat mm-hmm. that I had bought from like Goodwill or something that I thought it was the the baddest coat when I bought it, but it was like actually one of the ugliest coats I ever owned. <laughs> I've never even worn it out in public. But in that moment, in that moment it though. <laughs> At that time, <laughs> that was the coat, though. And it was that up, was can't nobody care. You know, I had I had a few of the moments. I had a few <laughs> members only jackets that that I got from Goodwill. I was like, no, that's it. That's it. I was like, how ain't nobody cop this coat yet? Like, <laughs> oh, that's the, that's the, that's sometimes that hurt the most because then when you look back, you're like, I know why nobody cop that one. I know because I was the one that's supposed to go cop that. I got it. <laughs> but you cop so, the jacket, and what happened now? Okay, so so, I'm, I'm, so I'm, I put on this crazy outfit, mm-hmm. and I that's when I was like, "Grab me that bird!" Mm-hmm. And now when I did "Grab me that bird," now this was the third video. That's when I realized because that one went stupid. Yeah, I think that video had like, th- I want to say it had two, two or three million views Sheesh. within like the first five hours I had posted it. Five hours. First five hours. Wow. So, and now at this point, this is why. I, <laughs> make sure I gotta tell people, man, when you post mm. it, make sure you're posting it on all platforms. Mm. Cause you have people who go viral on TikTok and they're scared to leave that platform. Yeah. Cause TikTok, the, the people can say the future's on TikTok, but you gotta hedge your bets, man. You gotta hedge your bets. You gotta put all your content everywhere. Cause when I was posting that on um TikTok, I was also posting it on Instagram. Mm-hmm. And that's it. Instagram is like it's a different, it's a different type of fan base on Instagram because TikTok people will follow you, but they don't really fuck with you. They don't even know your name, but they'll follow you. Mm, on I, Instagram, I, somebody if somebody follows you on Instagram, they really know they your really content. They really the be moment. on your page. Let me ask you really quick about the TikTok. Do you think that that's more so because of how TikTok is set up, like the algorithm, or do you think that has to do more so with um, people are just constantly like? I mean, I guess it's algorithm as well. They're constantly like exposed to so many different things. It's just TikTok is so TikTok is so fast paced. You don't have it's just like you're already on to the next. You know, what I mean, you're you're on there for like, let me just buy something real quick, go to the next one, eat something real right. quick. And sometimes you'll occasionally find something that makes you go like, let me go to this person's page to sure. check them out. Or if you see a person enough, you're eventually like gonna follow. Yeah. But Instagram is more like you're going there, you're taking your time, you're kind of like 
you know, reading comments, reading cat, it's, it's a little bit more slower pace. Mm, so it's more, it's a little bit more engaging as well in that process. Yeah, it's a little bit more sense. engaging. That makes sense. Cause I think that that was, if, you know, if I'm being transparent, that was kind of my thing that kind of discouraged me early on with TikTok, even doing the kind of content I did, I didn't really want to go the route of, you know, trying to do, I guess, whatever's considered the TikTok thing. I was like, I just want to like bring this in a micro content form to it. But the, the output is something that seems like you got to, you got to pretty much stay you gotta, on, you, on top the, of it. That's, that's why I, I tell people nowadays, man, it's, um, this content creation, you have to be putting out content, man. If you real talk, if I don't drop something at least once a day, I feel like I'm getting I'm, I'm behind. Mm. Cause you really have kids, man, who want it so bad. Yeah. Who really are talented, who already know how to do the editing. They already know all the sound. They know all the memes and all the jokes mm -hmm. that are making five, six videos a day. Yeah. Yeah. Because they're at their parents' house, they ain't got they ain't got bills. That's all they want. So if you're older in this shit, it's kind of just like, man, you really have to take advantage. Cause I found that when the, the jokes I find myself making, I find that it's like, these are jokes. How old are you? If you don't mind me asking. I'm 36. You're 36. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm 29. Mm -hmm. My comedy comes from like Mad TV, Jamie Foxx show. Those are my favorites. Uh, <laughs> like, you know, what, what else was like uh, Martin. Mm -hmm. Fresh you know, Prince, that, that Fresh era. Fresh Prince. Yeah. So that's why I'm, I feel like, if I feel like the young, the younger people, they don't even have that type of, I feel like they don't, they, they for them, they, they act like they, they think my comedy is unique or something. They're like, Oh, it's so mm -hmm. different. I'm like, this is the shit we grew up on. This yeah. is like, this is how this were my, my comedy is what I used to laugh at, mm -hmm. you know? So that's just, it's like, you got to take advantage of your, the younger people have time. So the older people have to use their wisdom, use right. the old, you already know what was banging. Yeah, bring you've it seen back it before. to the young people. You see it before. And and, and I, I think that's what's so dope about what you do. And I keep referencing, I mean, everything that you got on there is 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 hilarious. Like I, I referenced the, the the kid in the bathroom who, who who's singing a song and he's taking the water and sprinkling on his head because he don't want to <laughs> jump in the shower. And I'm like, I'm up here like like looking around, like, man, it, I said the accuracy though, and one of y'all folks got on me like you went in here cleaning. Like, so for those who don't know, I'm gonna probably post a clip up here, but um, he's playing a little kid that's that's on uh, what was it? What was you on? Uh, I was on the switch. <laughs> on the switch, and a little kid like supposed to be taking a bath. You know, your parents you go take a, as a kid, they say you go take go take a bath, but you don't feel like like really taking a bath, so you just let the water run, and you just sitting here putting water on your head, so you come out. I was like, I know every kid didn't relate to that, but I for sure did. And one of, one of, one of his supporters got on me like. You ain't washing your grown ass. I'm like, look, I wish I can go in a time machine and go back and clean. But I love showers now. Let me tell you, I love showers now. But when I was, younger, I love it now. Yes, yeah. I got a back brush and everything now. I feel that. that's when I knew I officially got got old. I was like, I'm officially that age. Like yeah. I, I went to, I went and got a bath brush, and I was like, yo, I can't wait to get home and experience. I was like, wait a minute. Yeah, I'm you officially that age. It's like you actually smell enough. Like, oh. <laughs> it's like, oh, I got to get the candle before I leave. Yeah, you know you officially that age when that happens. <laughs> uh, I got my candle right come on. Yeah, I Everything in, look, come on now. What were we, what were we really talking about? You know, I got the, 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 the you know, the scented, scented sticks in here and all of that. Yeah. But that's how you know you're getting that age. But I, I think you say something that's, that's really a whole lot for someone that is older in this. Um, to think on because it's like, damn, yeah, you do have to put the output out, but you have the ultimate cheat code of experience. And then I think about your comedy, bro. What I love about it is that, like, the it's it's sometimes the videos you pick are more vulgar than than what you're actually saying. Hey, yeah, a hundred percent. Yes, exactly. So was that a conscious decision, or was that something that kind of like? <laughs> it wasn't a. It wasn't a con. I wouldn't say it's a conscious decision. It's kind of like my comedy. I live for my comedy everybody to be able to enjoy it. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? I love it for it to be like a walk in the line. Like, I don't want people, I don't want people to watch my videos and be like, you know, like, oh, that was a little raunchy. Yeah. <laughs> even too raunchy or something. I want it right. to be still, you know, every, I want everybody to be able to enjoy it. Right. So it's like, I don't, I always, <laughs> people laugh when I say this. I feel like down bad man on a certain level is wholesome. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> very very you know, much he, so. <laughs> I'm not saying I, I want to, I want to fuck these shit. He's yeah. saying, he's, he's like, grab me that. <laughs> it's <laughs> always a one liner that makes it like, 
Well, that's wholesome. That's not that yes, bad. Yes, like, because <laughs> you'll say something that's like, it's like, uh, uh, but, but uh, uh, it's, he said, grab me that anaconda. But, sir, you're like, uh, uh, it ain't been nothing yet. I mean, you'll say it, and it's like, it, it it's really, like, it really puts the listener and the viewer on their toes to where it's like, am I the dirty one? Because <laughs> where my mind went because of this whole sequence of events, it got me like looking at myself like, you know, I got, I got to do some brain. Like, got... <laughs> it's, it's, it's very Im- Im- implying, you know what I'm saying? That, sure, that's sure. The, that's a joke. A lot of people miss a lot. Of the, the best part of me, the best part of comedy for me is like, some people are so focused on the joke, the punchline. Sure, yeah. Sometimes the best part of the joke, man, is the shit around the fucking punchline. Like, mm-hmm. that's what really, that's where you really get the funny, man. Yeah. And that's like kind of my favorite part to play around the comedy, like playing around the punchline. What's interesting is I feel like that in a lot of ways, that's that was my favorite music. Like when you think about in that same context, like a Maxwell, Maxwell will sing a song till the cops come knocking. He won't go flat out like the way the songs are now. It's like I bust it open. I, you know, eat the booty yeah. like groceries. It's like, damn, like, hold on, sir. Could you hold on just a second? Can I like understand what y'all relationship is? And it's like, nah, ain't no time for that now. But like there were songs that ease you into the whole idea it was like it it, it, it was uh implying of certain things yeah. and it allowed your imagination to go uh and i feel like in a lot of ways too you know uh comedy has has done that too and I, that's what i loved about martin is that martin could could go there even on fox he could go there be raunchy but then found a way to still make it to where it was like if you're a kid you you wouldn't know no better until you repeated some of the stuff that he said yeah right? exactly <laughs> like honestly, Martin, when when you go back and watch Martin, man, it, the way I just be laughing, the character, like yes. the characters you would play, you would see a character, a character would come off screen, and you, you, he don't say nothing. All he do is open the door. You already dying. <laughs> yes. You know the character. Who's the character he used to play? The cop with the uh with the belly. I forget the dude's yeah. name, but I remember Jerome uh, Rome, 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 Rome. <laughs> Yeah. He just walking in with a gold tooth and just be like, I'm there. Oh. Yeah. 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 Like, he ain't said nothing. Bro. He just looking at you. And it was just <laughs> like, it was that that's the type of stuff that would just have me dying. Yeah. Man, you know what I'm saying? Like, I always want to make stuff that every time I make a video, trust me, like my videos, I be watching them too. Like, I be, mm-hmm. I want to make something that makes me laugh because I always try to entertain myself, man. Bro, that's that. I think that's what's so far about you too is that. Your energy, even aside, it's almost like three different three different people in one. Because I look at it like I can I can imagine that it's probably a different experience when you're studying mechanical engineering, and it's a different experience of Mike Cakes when you know you're doing the down bad and the down you know that whole series. And then there's another one in which you're doing these live streams, and I'm like, your energy is so infectious, and people you can tell they love just being in your presence. It you know you you light people's days up. I'm looking in the comments. I was in the Twitch the other day for the first time, and I'm just seeing folks that are just lit up just by you chopping it up about or your Oreo tears and and chip tears, and it's like that is just gotta be a hell of a gig right there, man. And just be yourself, and then have all of these different sides that you still be able to coexist. So I, I guess my my question in that is, you know, what was sort of the reaction from friends and maybe even family? when you first started cracking off and they were, you know, Man. cause everybody's trying to do something, right. Especially yeah. in our area, everybody's trying to do something internet based, but you did it right. Yeah. And you're still doing it. What was sort of their reaction when things started cracking off the way it did? Now, ma'am, here is <laughs> wild. Now my friends, my friends have always, I've always been making silly. Like I will always make silly videos for my friends. Like they always right. know me, my personality and you how it was. So for them, me making videos, is just like, Oh, you know, Mike's on his regular shit. Mm. Now my family, I'm Nigerian, so my both my parents are uh, not both my parents are Nigerian. I'm the youngest of four. All my uh, siblings ahead of me, like they all have their deg- they all have their degrees, mm-hmm. like bachelors, masters. So it's very in my household. It's very uh, school. Yeah, like you're going to yeah. school, and not even not, you're not going to school for uh, what's it arts or so you're either going to school, you'd be a doctor, engineer, like you're going for some doctor, engineer. Right. <laughs> I mean, that's, right, right. those are your choices. So it's, I never wanted to, uh, I, I knew from the jump, like, you know, if I tried to tell my parents, like, I want to, 
I want to do comedy is like that's not a that's not a viable option. Right, right. So I never really was going to my family for that type of I wasn't looking for them for to validate what I was doing. Sure. sure. My my shit was let me make it un- so undeniable that when it, by the time they want to put in, it's like our I'm already, the work's already done. Right. You know, so so when I'm as I was getting to, well, let me speak of how my parents first found sure, it. My sure. parents didn't know what was going on. Right. Oh wow. I was in. I was up here in my room. <laughs> you know what I mean? They just think I'm on my bed. How, how, how do you hide? And, and how do you hide that? And you got 2.4 million people. <laughs> the Curtis King podcast is proudly sponsored by the Vaclia Doubler. What is the Doubler? Well, I think better than telling you. I should show you. You trying to tell me I can use this microphone to make beats, to make melodies, to make chord progressions. I can use my voice. I'm all in. Pretty cool, right? Check this out. The Vaclia Doubler represents the future of making music. The Vaclia Doubler is a real-time voice recognition MIDI controller. It offers up a never-before-seen way to translate your musical ideas into reality using the one instrument you've been practicing since birth, your voice. Make more of the music you love without having to worry about how to get your ideas into your DAW. Before the Doubler even sponsored this podcast, I picked it up just because I'm a geek about technology. And I personally picked up the Doubler Studio Kit, which allows you to hum a melody, a synth pattern, or even beatbox one shots right into FPC if you use FL Studio or whatever DAW that you're using. This also allows you to manipulate effects and filters in a way that only the voice can. To get the Studio Doubler like, Kit, here's all you gotta do is access getdoubler.com forward slash yeah, Curtis King. you may have 2.4, but that doesn't account for the people who are sharing it amongst their 30, their 40, their 400, their 1,000, 10,000, and then the celebrities that get involved with everything. Like, you are you making your way around a lot. How do you hide that and you going viral everywhere? I'm sure you get recognized. I'm sure that, yeah. you know, especially with them glasses. You know what I'm saying? I know if you wear them glasses, they like, oh. Don't wear a beanie today. Don't let it be cold where you at. Don't let it be that because it's going to get recognized. How do you hide something like that? Like, how is that possible? It was, it, it honestly, it was. Was it was headed for a, it was hidden for a while, yeah. But it, it, it happened when one day my mom, uh, my mom and dad went to uh, one of their friends' houses, oh, and you know they're hanging out, they're drinking. They just organically bring it up, like we love your sons, we love your sons' videos. Like we're here, why we watch his videos all the time, we love it. <laughs> and so they show them, they show them the videos, and they're like they have they had no idea oh, what was wow. going on because. For me, I'm just I'm grinding like sure. I'm trying to like I'm not gonna tell them about this until d- d- until it is something. D- until there's something to a yeah. show to be like this is solid. This is so even them finding out I haven't I didn't even tell them at that point. So I'm just one day I'm coming down from my room in the kitchen. My mom was like, "So I see you're making videos." And even at that point, I'm like. What are you, like, you know, what are yeah, you feeling? Not, that, what are you feeling in that moment? Are, are you? Are you? Is, is your heart beating a little fast? Are you just kind of like you're real casual about it? I was real casual about yeah. it because at that point I'm just like I knew even, even at that point I still knew what what they what they're still mm. they I'm still in school at this point I still know they would be like you don't need to be focusing on that you need to be focusing on graduates I didn't I didn't I right now my, I was so focused I didn't even want anybody who wasn't gonna tell me videos be i knew they were going to tell me to focus on school focus. sure and I but you know what you wanted school, to do yeah. i knew what i wanted to do right and you know and sometimes when you know what you sometimes when you know when you know what you have to do sometimes even i love you love your family but your family is the one who can have they, their words can affect you the most mm. so it's kind of like you have to protect your you have to protect I had to balance it, man, because I yeah. school's important. School was very important to me. And that's the for them, that's the number one, that's the safest. And right. your parents love you so much, they always want you to do what's gonna what's gonna be safe, what's they you what's most viable. 
Sure. So I, I didn't want to, I just, I was, it was a dream. You know what I'm saying? It was a dream and I, I just wanted to keep the dream alive. I didn't want, I didn't want anybody to dissuade me from it. So at that point, I'm still like, yeah, I'm making videos, but it ain't really, it's nothing. Mm-hmm. So I really, I really embraced letting them know about my content, like when I graduated. Mm-hmm. So once I graduated now, it was like at the day of graduation, I remember I was down, I was down here in the back and we had some friends over and they were like, how did you graduate? What are you going to do? And without hesitation, I was like, well, I'm a, I'm a comedian now. <laughs> you know, like, I, <laughs> I, I, did, like, I did what I was supposed to do. I, I, did, I got my shit. I'm a comedian yeah. now. And they were, the person even had this look on their face. They're like, what? And yeah. like, they didn't know. But it, I, I was so surprised. Like my, my mom was like, and my, and my mom didn't say anything. Like she was, she was like, oh yeah, he's, and she mentioned like, wow. oh, here's, here's his bitch. She was ready to show them the content. Yeah. And it, it, what was even funnier is, the day of my graduation, someone had brought their son with them. Mm-hmm. So I opened the door. I literally opened the door. The son sees me. The son's like, <laughs> you know, he's like, are, are, are you my case? Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah. I was, yeah. Like, I was like, yeah, and this dude was shaking. Like, and I saw people, the, the, everyone there was older. You know, mm-hmm. it was like my my parents' friends. You sure, know? sure. They could, it, it, I think it hit them right then. It's like, oh yeah, like, because their kids have been telling them about me too, but it's like older people, right? You know, older people in their 50s, 60s, they don't understand the the internet right now. Like they don't understand how pace. powerful it is. Uh, it's yeah. really, really powerful. Yeah. So yeah. I think then they really now they really understand that there's there's some real, there's some there's some heat behind it now. I don't think you realize how much uh encouragement that gives so many producers who are in the same situation and that it won't even matter what placements they get, who they worked with, if they're still, you know, with moms and pops, moms and pops is like, that's cool and all, but these are your responsibilities while you're underneath my household. Uh And the Uh fact that you not only, that you not only honored your commitment to that, but the fact that you did that and didn't let what you truly love and your passion uh, deter, or you didn't, you know, slow it down. Uh, That is something that I think a lot of folks need to hear because a lot of folks get really in their head about, well, my parents, why don't they support me the hardest in what I want to do and what I love? If I love this and they love me, you know, don't they owe me their support? And, you know, I always personally tell them, I'm like, no, that's when they made you, they had a responsibility to do whatever X, Y, and Z that they laid out. And part of that is to make sure that you're able to take care of yourself Mm -hmm. and out of love. They're not pushing you away. And that's a hard thing, bro. It took me years. And so honestly, until I got to my thirties to realize the love underneath my pops, who was like, yeah, I don't know about music. You need to stay in school and do what you do. Uh, But now that I got my own son and he's, he's only three, I'm able to now see it from another perspective and that it's not less love. It's just love in a different language. What, What kind of advice would you give to somebody who's in that situation where they may have even stricter parents about school and, they don't want to hear anything about their music. What advice would you have for them as they're still pursuing their goals? Because you did it, bro. You really, you have really did it and you're still nowhere near. I'm sure where you ultimately want to be, but you did yeah. probably the, the hardest part of this. It's man. It's, it's crazy. You, you can't see, hey man, I got this from Will Smith, man. Mm-hmm. Will Smith did this interview right for bad boys through something. He said, like your dream is like mother your dream is your dream man it, and it sounds it's going to sound crazy you know what i'm saying and like you it's pursuing your dream is lonely man like you can't you're not gonna have motherfuckers rallying with you at the very beginning like i remember dropping videos flopping like most of my videos would flop like i would drop 30 videos in a week Jeez. And maybe one or two videos did all right. right. You know what I'm saying? Like, but I just kept, kept adding, kept adding, kept adding. And when I motherfuckers was, you know, when you post it, you know, when you post it on Instagram and, and you ain't getting no type of love, nobody's commenting on, you know, mm-hmm. nobody's liking it. I didn't give a fuck, man. That just let me know, okay, I got to cut better. I got to make something that's really going to make you, that's going to make you want to react to it, man. Right. And it's like, you have to, it's, it's almost like you, when I look back at my older shit, 
I thought I was dropping the best videos on the goddamn planet. Mm -hmm. Now that I look <laughs> back on it, those videos <laughs> not all of them were that great. Right. But it's just you have to have the belief. You almost have to be delusional. I say it all the time. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, you almost yeah. have to be delusional because I was just, I wanted it so bad. I was, I just kept at it, kept at it, kept at it. And then when eventually it did hit, I was already in the mode. Like when somebody was, I remember somebody was like, oh, uh, I, yo, that video you dropped was a banger. Mm -hmm. And I was like, which video? They were like, the one you just dropped, they had like 2 million views. I'd already made six other videos. Like, cause wow. you know, somebody will get a video and it'll go viral and they're, they're watching that video. Like yeah. happy. You and the, the way this internet moved, mm -hmm. by the time that hit, by the time they find out that hit, you got to be on your other hit making it. You know what I'm saying? You can't that's get fire. caught up. That's fire. That's and fire. that's what it taught me. That's why I'm so blessed with TikTok. TikTok taught me that you can't fall in love with each product. Like each product, people want to, every project to be their baby, man. Sure. Like sure. I love this so much. I want to make it perfect, make it perfect, make it perfect. Drop that shit, drop that shit, drop that shit. Refine it, refine it, refine it. Mm -hmm. Get so cold at it, man, where you just, you can create, you create. The hardest part for me is making it. Like you'll get an idea. That's mm -hmm. a good idea. Mm -hmm. But the I, the way to make it is what takes time. Once you make so much, once you start making so much, you get good at making it, man. And then it's just like, you can drop it without being hurt. You got to have thick skin. Yeah. And being thick skin and being consistent and being and that's what if if it's because if you're consistent, bro, I'm telling you, people, that is the key. Right, right. I mean, that is the key. And you, you, man, you. That's there's a few points that you nailed home. Uh, and and, and I wonder too, at at one point, because I mean, we, you know, it's it's like that old saying from Erica Badu. I'm an artist and I'm sensitive about my shit. Like you, you also want to make sure because this is the first time that somebody's going to be watching this content when you drop it. This may be the first video and you obviously don't want to put anything out there that is um, significantly less than what you're capable of doing. But at some point you have to make some kind of peace between the whole quantity and quality conversation. Where, where did you kind of like have that that crossroads where you're like, you know what, they may not all be this one that did x amount of views but shit i have to continue to keep building on where, where do you think was sort of that crossroads or was it really school that made you have to have that 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 uh <laughs> that quantity Man, over so, quality? so i okay so i started i started college <laughs> in 2010 Ooh. i started college in 2010 yeah, yeah for mechanical engineering i dropped out of college two times Wow. You know what I'm saying? Twice. Right, 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 right. So, it, and I dropped out the first time because I was just like, man, school isn't for me. Like, I'm going to figure out, I'm going to figure something. I was always, and I was, during the time I was, I was like, you know, I had my camera. I was made, I was kind of making content, but it wasn't still even to this day. I, was, I wasn't thinking that I was going to, there wasn't anything viable in the content world for me. So I dropped out. I was working. I was like, you know what, fuck it, let me come back to school. I came back to school, man, did another semester. I was like, yeah, nah, fuck it, I'm really done with school. Dropped out again. Right, right. And I, when I dropped out again, man, I remember one day I was out, I was out running. Because I usually, I used to wake up in the morning, smoke a big ass blunt, run three miles. How? <laughs> How? You said a blunt. You didn't say yeah. paper. You didn't say, uh, uh, you know what I'm saying? You said, you said the thing that takes away your air. How? Sir, no. <laughs> I don't know. I, that, that was just my routine. I used to love, I used to That's wake crazy. up at like six in the morning, yeah. drive to this little park in the neighborhood, okay, blaze up and just like, and that was my time to like think, yeah, 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 and just like really. And I used to make big silly videos in my car, like, and I was always like, I was always making throughout this whole thing, mm -hmm. I was always making videos, like either, whether I was on Instagram, Snapchat. I was, I was always doing that. So I'm on, I'm on this run and I'm thinking to myself, man, I was like, why did I drop out of school? I really said to myself, why did I drop out? Right, right. I dropped out because it was hard, man. You know what I'm saying? I dropped right. out because it was hard. And I was like, if I want to make it in, in this time I was thinking about social media, I'm like, if I want to make it in social media, it's going to be fucking hard. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So if I can't make it in social media and I can't, do college at the same time. 
if, if that's too hard for me, I'm not destined. I'm just, I can't do it then. I'm not, I'm destined not to make it. Damn, that's heavy. That's heavy. So thank, thankfully, my pops, this is crazy. My pops is a professor at the, uh, he's, he's, he's the head of the mechanical engineering department at mm-hmm. uh, my university. Okay. So I'm telling, I, I told my pops, and yo, my parents were always strict, but when I tell you, man, they was, whenever I told them, I tell you, I dropped out twice already. Mm-hmm. When I told my pops, I want to go back to college again. This dude wasn't like, he, this man was not like, y'all know, like, uh, again, like, so he didn't drop. Right. He was there immediately. Like, next day, he was like, okay, here's what you need. To, like, he was, he was there. Yeah. So I'm back in college. This time I'm serious. Like, I'm focused. I'm like, I, I think I get back in, I'm like 27 or 26. Mm-hmm. I'm on my shit. Like I'm not, I'm not focused on girls. Like I'm just like, I'm going, I'm going to campus and I'm fucking leave. Like I'm going to my classes. I'm getting off campus. Like Mm -hmm. I'm on my shit. So then this pandemic shit hits. Mm -hmm. So this is like, I I think I'm in my last two semesters, last three semesters, this pandemic shit hits. And during this pandemic, I'm in college and I'm also uh, doing, I'm also waiting. So Monday, Monday through uh, Thursday, I was in classes. Friday through Sunday, I was waiting tables. Right. So pandemic hits. Yo, I know you heard about that six hundred dollar a week. Uh, where we're giving everybody six hundred dollars a week for unemployment. Mm-hmm. I was making like two hundred dollars on a good week waiting tables. Right. As soon as that pandemic shit hit, I started making like I was making like six hundred, not working, not doing anything. So I had all that free time. I was getting 600 a week. Right. Oh man. That's what I was. That's what I was on that TikTok shit. Tough. Yeah. That's when it started. Like, so March, 2020, dude, I was just making like five videos a day for like a year nonstop. So I got to ask you, and I don't want to cut off the story, but where do you, where do you think that drive comes from? Because I think a lot of folks, when that pandemic hit and it was like shut down, they were so in a frenzy and so in a panic toilet paper was getting took off the shelves and you didn't know. You know, I mean, it was real, real. I mean, that's not a real, real concern, but it was a, all these things going on, people losing their jobs and folks worried about, like, how were you able to say, fuck it, time to dial in? Like, where does that drive come from, you think? No, the, the fear of graduation. Because I knew I was about to graduate. And I knew, <laughs> I knew if I graduated and I didn't make it, hadn't made on the social media shit, mm-hmm. I was going to have to fill out that fucking resume mm-hmm. and go get a regular job. That's <laughs> that's and that real. shit. Yo, so, you saw, so you saw the opportunity. You were like, you were like, you were, but sir, it's a pandemic. You was like, well, shit. <laughs> what, what? I was like, well, shit. I, I, I was watching it. I remember I used to be yeah. my boys. I used to go to my boys' crib. Like, it would be blazing. I'd be sitting at this table for hours just talking to them about the TikTok algorithm, telling yeah. them how you, this this video can get you this, these, you, sure. just talking about it. Because the fear, I was like, there, bro, I do not want to, I listen, I know. I I have to. I couldn't graduate and not. I just I just knew I had to. I had to do something that was going to bring. I didn't. I don't want my parents to be laying up at night fear and thinking like, oh, my son's my son can't feed. He, my can't son isn't able to take care of himself. Mm-hmm. I was not going to fucking do that. So I knew either I'm a dude finish his college shit, get a regular job, or that's it. If I don't make it on the social media shit, I'm I'm a make, I'm a mechanical engineer. That's right. it. Right, right. So that fear of, <laughs> you know, like having man, some, that was real. the fear, man. And that drove me. That drove me like, because it was like anytime I had a moment, it's just like, when I, instead of being chilling, and also video games, I cut out video games. That gave man. me a lot of fucking time, man. When I stopped, when I replaced the time I was playing video games with making content, right? that really, that really stepped it up too. Well, in the way that you described it, that makes so much sense because if, the videos became a release, right? If those became a place for you to kind of like dump out all that pent up energy from, you know, kind of being in this structured environment with school, if you had a place to kind of like dump out all these ideas and take chances and then go for the thing that you, that you love, it just seems like that is the same energy that video games is. I know that's what it is for me. Like when I get on, when I play 2K, I'm able to just like let my brain just take a nap while I'm still awake. Right. I'm just going, I'm, I'm worried about things that have like no real concern on my real life, but I'm just in there playing. And so I'm like, that's, we all have to have that kind of thing to balance things out. 
uh, the fact that you 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 did it, the fact that you continue to do it, it's it's something that I think is inspiring, not even just to me, but I'm sure to so many folks that you probably wouldn't even know. Uh, what was it? What was sort of a the the first major surprise when your content is out there? You you're like I said, you're 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 zoned in. You got the tunnel vision. You're looking at you know I have to put this out. This amount of content. What was that moment that kind of like stops you for a second? Like, oh, shit, this person or maybe this comedian or whoever you got on the radar and they shared it or they hit you up and told you how big of a fan they were. Was there a moment like that that you can remember that kind of paused you for a second? The moment that the moment that paused me, I remember it, it was it was kind of later, too. Mm-hmm. It was the first time I left Nashville. It was the first time I left Nashville because I had been doing this entire time. I've been doing this shit in Nashville, like in my room. Right. So I was leaving Nashville. I was going to Chicago. Mm-hmm. And right when I was going to Chicago, I took a picture and I posted, I posted it on Instagram and I went to the airport. And when I looked at the picture, I literally had the picture up for like, I don't know, like an hour or two hours. The picture had like 30,000 likes or something. Right. <laughs> and I was just like, I remember looking at, going through Instagram, looking at other people's Instagrams and seeing, you know, celebrities who would have thousands of pictures on likes and being like, that's why that moment, I, I was on the way to Chicago to stay. I was, I was going to uh, stay with, uh, I don't know if you know, it's like a uh, Nika Charmaine. They were, they were like on a show called Black Ink Crew. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. On the no, show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. And also I was, I was at the, so I was at the airport talking to my sister and I, I cause I, you know, I'm working, I'm always making videos. I don't really, I'm not my, I just know I'm cool with me. Mm-hmm. Charmaine wants me to come over there to surprise me for his birthday. Right. So I'm talking to my sister. I'm just like, Oh yeah, I'm going to stay with Charmaine. And she was like, Charmaine. She's like, that's Charmaine from black and crew VH. Well, like what? And right. the way my sister was excited was like, and I had just posted that picture. I was in that moment. I felt like, Okay, now I feel mm. like I can take a breath and right. take a breath and and really be like, okay, I've done something. Because before then, man, I didn't feel like <laughs> I really didn't feel like I had done shit. I right. was really just feeling like I, this ain't this ain't shit yet. This ain't shit yet. Yeah. That moment, I felt like maybe now I could pos- potentially there's something here. Yeah, yeah, it's, and it's, that's what I. Re- and that's that's crazy because I mean I'm I, it's that's what I love too about your content is that it has the energy of someone that has never gone viral yet, like you oh. you know how people get go viral a few times and then they start to kind of like they kind of half ass the content and yeah. it's like between your output between like you even like 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 you'll you'll go off of the things that have been successful for you and i can and it's almost like i can kind of tell when you're testing something but i can't because i'm enjoying the damn thing so much um <laughs> i'm just sitting here like this is another piece of comedic content that brings it back to you now i have a question about the flip side of that so that's the beautiful side of in that obviously it's going to attract folks who are very influential and it shows you your influence as well what has been sort of, sort of the weird shit cuz i know if i'm getting the weird shit and i don't even make you know i don't even make content that is even even slightly suggesting you i know folks didn't sent you video oh, you should cover this you should do this bro and you're just like don't send me this like you, <laughs> you, you know honestly like i a lot of it i don't check a lot of my dms okay i that, that's that's <laughs> that's made me avoid a lot of the stuff because i don't man you you know yeah when you're when you're certain at a certain point on social media it's like every conversation the conversations aren't conversations anymore it's kind of like what can you do for me mm, you know what i'm saying like entertain say, me do something yeah, like, like, do even a message yeah. of like hey i like your stuff and you're like oh damn appreciate it. the next message is i would really appreciate it if you could that's instantly the next wait, message you know wait wait could you repeat that one more time so the people <laughs> folks, uh, folks know that that's not just relegated to music producers do you understand i got goosebumps hearing you say that and i'm not even exaggerating i'm like i talk about this all the time and then people are like that's just producers, bro. No, the hell it's not. It's just weird people, bro. Yeah. The folks that hit you with that, it's almost like a uh it's almost like a pat on the back before you give it a slap in the face. Like it's yeah. like they 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 man, you're so inspirational, bro. Like, bro, you took me through some hard times. Oh man, I appreciate that. And you want to be genuine and show love. And then it's like, but uh, but listen, um yeah. and, my- <laughs> and that and that and that has made that has kind of made me like that's I really before when I first started I was always answering DMs and yeah. 
and reply back. But now it's like every conversation is kind of turned into that. Mm-hmm. But it's also been like people I genuinely like you. Like I saw your content, man. And I saw your shit. I was just like, I was genuinely like interested. I liked it. And it was just like when you now it's like what I it, it makes the relationships I do for more genuine than that. Cause it's like, I can talk to you and it's like, you talk to me, there's no, I'm trying to get this from you or you're trying to get this from me. It's just like, let's just, I, I, I just want to, I like, I can meet real individuals now. Like, mm-hmm. cause when I message you, it wasn't like, usually if I message someone, they'll be like, next thing they're already, it, it's just kind of like, they're already trying to get something asking, out of your asking. shit was like, it was real. It was just like, Oh, you, you was just on some real shit. That's yeah. why you was like podcast. I was like, bet. Like, yeah. even I won. I was excited for this shit. I have yeah. never done a podcast. But as soon as you say you want to do a podcast, I was like, yo, bro. What? I'm, did, on, did, I'm on this Did shit. we get a first? Did we honestly, did we get a first? <laughs> did we get a first? What? Mike? I, <laughs> shit, bro, I was going to be in content because I just liked your I was like, your shit's yeah. dope, bro. So thank I was like, you, fuck thank yeah. You, like. Thank you. And, 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 it, and it's crazy, too, because I'm in a transition stage in which, you know, the last uh, interview that I had was with Hannibal Burris. And like folks were like, wait a minute. First of all, how did y'all link up? How does this make sense for you as a music producer? And I'm like, I'm really understanding that in my space as a producer, I'm like the anomaly and that I'm 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 the dude that, you know, we it's all good vibes and inspiration until somebody comes in here with the trollery, then they got they 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 gotta be welcome to the barbecue then. You, 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 you just, you just, and they're not used to that. And it's like you you forget I went to LAUSD and I you gotta learn how to fend for yourself out here if you if you can't handle a yo mama joke or anything like that. So it's like yeah. I, that's what I come up under. And so the jokes are are plentiful, but it's like I'm these this is the kind of content I watch. I don't watch producer content on a regular basis. I get yeah. burnt out because it's like I I've seen this shit before. You're but creating I, content, you're creating content that you want to that you would enjoy. Exactly. Or or I'm interviewing the folks that I actually am genuinely like I'm genuinely a fan of what I'm what I'm watching. Like when I'm watching your stuff, I'm watching uh, the homie Long Beach Griffey when I'm watching like all these like, you know, what I'm saying like these. And yeah. then it's crazy now when I'm reaching out and then it's, it's, it's there's that mutual respect. But like you said, it comes back down to the authenticity factor. But at that that at the end of the day, man, is is what I think keeps people coming to you is the fact that you know, as, as much as your platforms have blown up, like you still have a very real and genuine energy and you still very interested in people like, Oh, I was watching a, a, a live. I think you put up on IG and you were asking like, uh, about so- somebody from New York. You you know, when I come to New York, I for sure, we got, we sure got to kick it and da, 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 da. And folks is like, like, he really, yeah, like, like, yes, he really is a human being that actually is interested in other people. I, I, and I love yes. that. I think that that's important, especially in this age. How, how important do you think it is for folks that have the title of influencer that are, you know, um, in this space to still like love people? Right. Because I'm sure oh. that there's times where you like you be around Man, people so much you, you want to take is- a break. But how, how important do you think that is? I think it's I think it's really important, man, because the shit is the shit. A lot of this shit out here, a lot of these a lot of these content creators out here, it's it, it's fake, man. Like they're creating. It's mm-hmm. like it's if you don't like what you do, man, people are gonna see that shit. Go like, feel it, it for be, sure. Hell yeah. it's, mm-hmm. If it's genuine, it's 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 easy. Like when I wake up, it's not like oh man, I gotta go put on it's like i'm waking up and it's just like i get to be myself i enjoy this i love it like if sometimes people are if you do what you love maybe social media is do what you love man mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying when you do what you love that's that's when the success will come and some people have to realize maybe social media isn't what you love man maybe what you love is fucking cooking or maybe what you love is helping people if right. you do that the success that you will get from that will be so filled, fulfilling. Like everything else will just cut. It'll just fall into your lap. Cause I was just blessed that what I love, what my passion is, is this, it's the internet shit. Like I love, like I love being (laughs) stupid on the internet. Like that's, that is, it sounds silly and it's ridiculous. And it's not something that you could make a career off. Like somebody says, what do you want to do when you're adult? It's like, be silly on the internet. That's not viable. Yeah, but 10 years ago, that was not even a, that, that was like, no way in hell, but this is a real thing now. Yeah, and exactly, so it's just like, this is what I love, it's my passion, so it's just like, 
I can't, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, this is what I want. So when somebody comes out, when I'm a chill, I remember I was uh, at the gym and somebody recognized me. And like, he was kind of walking up to me. Like he was going to see if I was going to trip or nothing. Right. I was, I, I, before he even walked up, I was already laughing. Cause I was just like, <laughs> yeah, I hit him with the first. Like we was both laughing. Cause it's just broke like, that ice is, instantly with that he one. Yeah. Ice instantly Cause I'm, I enjoy it. It's like, I'm yeah. not, I would never be out in public. If somebody's going to come up to me and be like, are you that sir, sir guy? And I'm going to be like, oh, listen, you're the f-. it's just like. <laughs> not here. We're not going to do I that am, sir I stuff am, here. And it's like, wait a minute. That's not even the same person. And the people who approach me, honestly, like they're, real, they're, they're my real fans. So they already know my energy. Yeah. So a lot of times the people who approach me already know the type of vibe I'm on. I yeah. give them the sir, sir, we laugh. And that's it. Like they don't yeah. harass me, nothing else. It's just. And that's like. It's I, I like it. I think I think you have to love what you, you have to love what you do, man. Or it's gonna you're gonna hate it because the bigger you get, the more people that are gonna come to you. And, and they're just gonna they're gonna keep reminding more, you more of the miserable. things. Yeah, exactly. They're gonna keep reminding you of the things that 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 do make you miserable. And and you know, where do you kind of pull, I guess, the the we already know where your drive comes from, but where do you kind of pull some of the inspiration or who are some of your favorite comedians or some of your favorite uh Look, influences? Dave, Dave mm-hmm. Chappelle. Uh okay. Jim Carrey, uh, mm-hmm. Jamie Foxx, mm-hmm. um, uh, Martin, uh, <laughs> who, who else? Uh, I would say those are like, those are my big ones. Though. That's like, your Mount Rushmore. Ones that, that's your Mount Rushmore yeah, right there? For, okay. for sure, for that's sure. A, that's a solid ass Mount Rushmore right there, man. <laughs> it's a, you know, like the physical, <laughs> the physical comedy of Jim Carrey, like sure. though Dave, Dave Chappelle was just like, dude, the Chappelle show, like, the skits, like skits is like, that's I think the Chappelle show is what even got me the, the idea of wanting mm-hmm. to make skits. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that was that I feel like that inspired everybody who they're supposed to fire everybody. You know what I'm saying? Oh, like man. and and the fact that she, but you know that even Dave Chappelle with the Chappelle show had a staff and had writers and there is so much more demand on a content creator like yourself because you're doing all that is yeah yes you're doing this from the phone but structuring it, figuring out the stuff that is going to resonate with the audience, figuring out, you know, the, the, the best times of the day to post, like there's so many more responsibilities on one person, you know, when you're creating this and it's crazy. Cause like I'm, I'm, I'm getting to go back to some of the twitches and watching like the process process of this, you know, I'm, I'm curious how much of that has been, you know, the same and how much of that has been, you know, when TikTok or Instagram presents a new feature and it's like, okay, well, I got to take advantage of this feature or I got to do this. And reels, i tell you reels when Instagram dropped reels, mm-hmm. I remember my boys, they, they said, they messaged me in the group chat. They were like, yo man, like Instagram's dropping reels, like TikTok about to die. Mm-hmm. And I was like, no, that's TikTok ain't finna die. That just gives me more, that just gives me more plat, more influence. That gives me another avenue to access. You know what right. I'm saying? As soon as reels drop, I was dropping reels every fucking day, man, all right. the time. And reels is exactly what blew up my account on Instagram. So it's like, you really, when those new features come, man, try to take advantage of them. Cause what, what are some of your tips for taking advantage? Like, what would that look for if you had to make it for someone who is just kind of getting into the game and kind of wants to do something that you do and not like the guys that. Uh, that's how I knew I was becoming a fan of your content. When I got, I was getting angry seeing folks copying it tid for tid bit and, and doing the tofu version of it. And I'm like, sir, like it, it wasn't even a funny, sir. It was like, sir, you don't get this yeah. shit off the internet. That's why I was like, you know what? I'm genuinely becoming a fan of the man's content. Cause I'm like, Ugh, don't do that. But for somebody, for somebody who's coming up and is genuinely inspired by you, has their own brand of comedy and humor. Uh, what is some advice that you would give to them? Uh, first for reals, and then I guess you get you gave a lot of game for TikTok, but specifically for reels, a new a new feature comes out. They want to take advantage of it. What does that look like? A lot of people, man, this is this is what I hear. Whenever I hear people saying there's people are scared of Instagram for some reason. They mm. feel like they have to put a polished version of themselves on Instagram because okay. that's why people are fit right. To, you hear people love TikTok. They say they love TikTok because they can be themselves on TikTok. Right. Take that same energy. Bring it to Instagram. Bring it to Instagram Reels. Those videos, because I'll, I'll see some people. The content you're posting on your TikTok, 
post it on your motherfucking Instagram. Because mm-hmm. I'll go to someone's TikTok, it's them being silly, having the time at all. It's, it's, it's jokes. Mm-hmm. And then you'll go to their Instagram and it's everybody wants to be cool. Mm-hmm. Like, if you're not cool, you're not fucking cool. Like, I don't think people understand. Being cool is being comfortable in your own fucking skin. One more time. So one, one more time. One more time. Your... A clues bomb. <laughs> <laughs> one more time. Being, you said being, being cool. cool is being comfortable in your own fucking skin. You hear that? You know what I'm saying? So that's why Cor- That's why people forgot Carlton from the Will Smith show. He wasn't court. I thought Carlton was the coolest motherfucker. Because mm-hmm. Carlton knew what he was all. He was corny. He knew he was fucking corny, man. Mm-hmm. It's you have to embrace it. If I see, if I go to your TikTok and I see you're silly on your TikTok, I go to your Instagram, you got all these curated pictures, and you see it, it doesn't translate. You'll see somebody yeah. have like five billion followers on that TikTok, and you'll mm-hmm. go to their Instagram. They got twenty thousand followers on their Instagram mm-hmm. because they're trying to be cool on it. Well, have fun, man. Playing devil's advocate though, because I know there's going to be folks who are going to feel this way about Instagram because there are. They can be very aggressive about some of the um, the censorship and folks reporting stuff and taking stuff down. Uh, what would you say for those folks who are like, well, TikTok allows me to be a little bit more raunchy and do little things and whatnot. What's the balance between that and Instagram? TikTok, I, 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 get, I get more, uh, I get more, what's that called? I get more uh, strike notices or something. I get more strike notices on on TikTok. Oh, TikTok, wow. They don't, they, TikTok t- almost take, the last two videos that I posted on my TikTok have been taken down. Wow. You know, like I, I get notices from TikTok all the time. Instagram has not fucked with me a single time. What did you get takedowns for? The glizzy? What, what? The, like, okay, so anytime, <laughs> anytime my video involves a woman now, that shit gets taken down. Uh, like, uh, if I remember one that had this chick deep, anytime it's a chick deep throat something, they'll take it down. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like, the yeah. song, I remember the, the last one I just made for the song, I, I said, Vibrator. Yeah. They took that, they took that down. No, the one you did with the, <laughs> the lady who had the red lipstick and was eating a sandwich. Like, what you do, Yo. what you do, like, bro, what you do <laughs> makes us look at them a little bit different. Yes, you are yeah. the down bad man, and you're bringing light to it, but it makes you look at it like, who was in the editing room and okayed this? Who didn't go back and say, hey, I don't know if you want to put this one out. Folks on the internet might, you know, somebody might do something with this. Like, yeah, I, you all, sure you- yo, I, got a, I got a whole database of <laughs> videos like that. A whole database. <laughs> what do you find? Like, I'm, I'm afraid to go in your, in your search, your search history. Like, where do you find? <laughs> I, I, I literally have it. I get, I get hundreds of videos, hundreds of videos a day from yeah, different people. So I got one today that I'm making. Oh man, it's going to be a good one. It's going to be a really good one. <laughs> That's what's up. Well, uh, we definitely want to wind everything, everything down, but I want to make sure that first and foremost, uh, we say thank you for being on here, man. It's, it's no. genuinely an honor to have you on here. No, fuck, no, bro. Thank you story. for having me on this shit. Like oh, this man, shit was, already. this was fucking fun, bro. This was yeah. fun for real. Well, anytime you got anything new dropping or anything that we need to know about, I know you got merch and I definitely want to uh, make sure we get all your links, but uh, what's next for you, man? Like you graduated, you got, you got this platform. Like it's almost like, you went and you still went to school, graduated, got this. You got a mechanical engineering degree to fall back on. Like what? And then now you're blessed with this, with the potential of a multi-million dollar platform based upon your personality, based upon your your ability to curate content. You literally have it there and you created that all on your own. What's next for you, bro? Okay, so here's what I'm doing. Once Down Bad Man gets to, right now I'm on Down Bad Man, like part A or something like that. Mm-hmm. Once it gets to part 100, right now it's parts. Mm-hmm. I'm going, to, I'm on YouTube. So I was going to go to Down Bad Man episode one. Ooh. And we're going to do an episode. We're going to transition Down Bad Man into a show. Oh, so. <laughs> wait, wait. Okay. And I know I kind of asked this question, but and, and maybe, maybe I'm reaching. Maybe I'm reaching. I'm just giving you pre-warning now. But when I, okay, give you an example. When I watched Norbit for the first time and I saw Eddie Murphy embody Rasputia, I said, no, hell no. That's somebody he knows. There's somebody <laughs> watching this as an auntie or somebody watching this like, I know the hell he didn't try to make fun of me. Like, I know for a fact. I wonder is there a real down bad man? Was it a deacon in the church? Was it was it somebody that just had this that? Is, this is how, this is how crazy. <laughs> I, I'm 29 years. I'm 20. I'm 20. I'm older now. Yeah. I'm much more for down bad man. Real talk. 
it's from my it's from my past, man. I was a horny, I was a horny <laughs> motherfucker back in the day. You know what I'm saying? Like my boys is horny. <laughs> You know what I'm saying? Like my boy, I remember I I, I said I used to say it all the time, like, like Mike, what's your type? I was yeah. like, my type is any any chick that finds me attractive, nigga. Right. Like <laughs> you find me attractive, yo, hey, she 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 wanna fall. Oh, she bad as hell then, nigga. Like, <laughs> you know what I'm like See, that's I the type of vibe I, I was on. I can't even laugh too hard because I know friends that bef- knew me before I was married. They probably said they probably like he's speaking your language. He's talking to you too, sir. He just saying but it. But I'm, I'm refined now. I'm, I'm, I'm refined I'm now. Refined, but it, yeah. it comes. It comes from that. That just that that hoardiness just from deep inside. You know what I mean? It was. It really just. I just took that and. Yeah, you made Expanded made something it, out of it. Made something out of it. And where the hell the sweat come from? Like, was that just now? I be now. Listen, I I really do be sweating. Yeah, yeah. I remember the first down the down bad man where people noticed the sweat was the uh, down bad where I said grab me that gadget, uh-huh. and I was making the video in my friend's crib, and he was like, "Bro, you're sweating hard as hell. Like, you want a towel? Like, you want to wipe down?" I was like, "Nah, fuck it. I'm just gonna shoot it like this." <laughs> so the first time you see down bad man sweating, that's, that's legit. real sweat. That's legit sweat. Oh. Like I be sweating like that. Yeah. But now I got the I got a I keep the spray bottle on me. <laughs> so I be I be spraying myself. So that's that's what I do now. Yeah. Well, and, and if you want to catch more, of that definitely go follow up on a Twitch. Which, by the way, where can folks find you? If I mean, I'm sure after a, a, a conversation like this, if they weren't already a fan, they're, they're now a fan. But where can they find you? Where can they find the merch? Uh, when are you streaming on Twitch? All that good stuff. Okay, so you can get your merch at mcakes.com, M-C-A-K-E-Z.com. And also, I'm streaming on Twitch Monday through Friday, 5 p.m. Central. I also stream Saturdays and Sundays. You pretty much catch me every day on Twitch at 5 p.m. Central. Also, I'm on all platforms, Mike Cakes. I'm on Facebook, I'm on Twitter, I'm on YouTube, Mike Cakes, Mm M-I-K-E-C-A-K-E-Z. Easy to find. And we'll make sure you put all of that in the, in the description, all the show notes and whatnot. But, bro, uh, let's definitely do this again sometime. And yes. I genuinely appreciate the conversation. I had a hell of a time. And Yo, this same. is why, ladies and gentlemen, we bring the Mike Cakes on to this, <laughs> this show. Are you? Can you give us one more, sir, before we leave? Sir! Uh, sir! sir. <laughs> Grab me that producer! <laughs> See, now you done messed up. Now, now, now I got me, because I, I, I stream up on YouTube, and I got my stream deck. And I got I got my my soundboard, man. I gotta be able to use that sound. Man, Crazy, I man. would love. I don't know when it, whatever you feel. Does yeah. that mean near future? Yeah. I would love to do something with you, music. So, just something. Let's do I don't it. know what it is. Something. Look, if you need an intro, if you want to, whatever, like, we'll figure it out. But let's yeah. definitely. That's not even a question about it. Uh, let's absolutely do that. We thank you and we appreciate ha- appreciate having you on here. So thank you, bro. No problem, man. Have a good one. Okay, music producers. So once again, that was the interview with Mike Cakes. I want to say thank you to everyone who was listening. I hope you enjoyed it. This is, I'm telling you, we we got we to gotta expand the content out. There is, there is so many interesting and hilarious and beautiful stories that have not been told. Today is not the exception to the rule. We greatly appreciate having Mike Cakes on. If you are listening to the traditional podcast platforms, you already know what to do. Five-star rating and some comments. YouTube, definitely share this with someone. Also, comment. I want to know what is your favorite part of this interview? What was a gem that you got from this conversation? Share it down below. And like I always say, in this life, you will not be full of life until you decide to live life to its fullest. Once again, it's Curtis King of the Curtis King Podcast. Have a good one.